Hey there everyone, thanks for signing up for my cross structure binding class. Um, I just wanted to run through some of the materials with you in case you want some variations I want to give you some hints for how to do that. Um, so basically the most important thing on making decisions is um, what you're using for your signature papers. So um, this is graph paper eight and a half by eleven. You can use you know regular copy paper. Um, I tend to use things like that when I'm doing the first run of a, of a new book that I haven't done before, just so I'm not wasting materials or anything. So anyway, this is eight and a half by eleven, and when I fold it, it is five and a half by eight and a half. And this, your folded signature. Um, guides your decision for your cover. So here's my cover paper, which for my five and a half by eight and a half paper is nine, nine this way, by 20. So um, you're gonna want, imagine, I'll just take one of these apart real quick. Imagine whatever size paper you're using, I probably have more space than I need in here, but you're going to need a gap of about at least, I'd say at least four or five inches between your two covers. Now don't fold this paper or anything until we get to class because uh, you'll, you'll wish you hadn't. Um, so on your signature paper, so a signature, if you hadn't had a class with me before, is the group of papers so that are folded in half like this. So that's all a signature is. Group of papers folded in half. I have, um, I suggest you have at least five. That's a good way to learn the stitch. You want to have at least five signatures to learn the stitch. And this is your homework. I want your signatures folded before you come to class when we meet um, or online in Zoom because that's a lot of time that you're spending in class that. Um, you don't have to be, so we can keep moving along. Uh, folding signatures, pretty simple stuff. Just make sure everything's fairly well lined up and hold them together. Then what I usually do is straight across from the middle, I pinch and then I take a bone folder. So you're definitely gonna need a bone folder. Um, I brought out a variety of bone folders and I'll show you those in a minute, but you're just going to smooth out that uh, fold and you're done folding your signature. So be sure you've folded all of your signatures before our class time. That's just going to save us a lot of time in class so we can just keep stitching rather than having everybody have to hold on while we finish folding. Okay? Folding the pieces of paper. Oh, I put think these are 10 each. This is fairly thin paper. So if you're using drawing paper or watercolor paper, you're not going to want as many pieces per signature. Um, so see how your paper folds. Um, if it's going to be really thick, you won't want as much in there. Okay. Um, office paper, you can easily get 10, five sheets, you know, actually these are five sheets each. So it's 10, sorry, it's t it'll be 10 pieces once it's folded, but it's five sheets in each Cover signature. Sheet. So I'm using Lokta paper, that L-O-K-T-A. Um, if you're here in Tucson, I really recommend the UN Center at Speedway and Wilmot uh, by Bookman's. But um, you want something fairly sturdy. Um, I've made others with Lokta paper and carried them around. They were my work notebooks got them soaking wet and they still are functioning notebooks. So something fairly sturdy. Um, Lokta is always one of my favorites, but it doesn't have to be Lokta, just something that you know can tolerate whatever you're going to use it for. If you're throwing it in a bag, something sturdy is really important. Okay. And again, this one is nine by 20. That's going to be more than enough. I'll actually probably cut some out of that. Okay, bone folders. So um, if you have a bone folder, it may look like any of these. These are sort of standard bone folders. This one's kind of curvy because it actually is made of bone. Um, they're made out of different materials. For this project, um, 
any kind of bone folder will work. And I've also brought out these, uh, these are bamboo scrapers. Well, this is actually a, um, a shim, but these are bamboo kitchen scrapers. They do a great job of bone folding or folding paper as well. So whatever you have, um, if you don't have an actual bone folder, you can make do with lots of things, okay? Uh, some sort of exacto knife, craft knife, nothing fancy. And uh, what I don't have on the table is scissors. You definitely need scissors. A paper awl. So how is a paper awl different? Sometimes we see awls that are used in woodworking and they may be a little big. So you just want a, a smallish tip because we don't want to tear giant holes in the paper. So whatever kind of awl, it's got a nice little tip. That is great. Uh, you will need another sheet of paper, not sheet, but just a piece. This is just a piece of cardstock. Um, it is the at least the length or close to the length of your signature. So from top to bottom, the binding edge. So mine might be a little short, but um, it, it would actually work okay. But um, at least that length is good. Just a little piece of cardstock doesn't have to be perfectly cut, um, but it'll do the job. Okay. If you don't have a bone folder, um, you, you're going to want to, on this we're going to do some scoring. So you're going to want something sort of pointy to do some scoring. Um, even, a, even a pencil will work for that. So a uh, ruler, at least a 12 inch ruler. I use a cork back. They seem to work best for me, um, but whatever you have. Uh, this is the binding thread. Um, I use waxed linen binding thread. Um, many of you, if you've had your class with me before, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but some sturdy, um, this is not going to break, some sturdy thread. The waxed linen is nice because it ties nice knots and whatnot. Um, some sturdy thread that's really going to hold your stitches is really important. Embroidery floss can work if it's good quality. A lot of it's just going to tear, so um, you don't want that. Some sort of cutting mat. Um, you really won't need much bigger than, you know, your little, your cover paper. So um, you can turn it sideways, whatever. But whatever kind of cu cutting mat you have. Um, and I highly recommend PVA glue. If you don't have anything, especially since this is our, you know, this is your first try, using Elmer's is just fine. You want something white that's gonna dry a little bit flexible. Um, these are two different brands. It's actually the same company, but um, PVA is what you're looking for, okay? It's a pH neutral, so it doesn't turn yellow. Um, it's really great for arch archival anything. This is by Lineco. This one is by Books by Hand, which is owned by Lineco. So it's the same company, but you'll see it with these different packaging. Um, I buy a lot of stuff from Hollanders in Michigan. It's a small family owned business. So I get my glue, you know, when I'm teaching classes, I need a lot of glue. So I get bigger than this um, containers of glue. So, um, and they're, it's really great. And I usually use just an old plastic lid for putting my glue in, some sort of glue brush. Um, I use the foam ones, but you can also use a paint brush um, that, with, that has a flat tip is best. Um, I wouldn't go with anything too skinny because then it's going to take you a long time. And this glue does dry quickly, especially if you're here in Arizona. This glue dries very quickly. So you want to have a glue brush that's going to accommodate what you need to glue. Um, we're going to be gluing strips that are about one inch across. So it's not a huge amount of property to cover. Um, so it doesn't need to be giant. And let's see, I think we have, oh, you might want some sort of surface, obviously, for gluing on. So it, if you know me, you know I love my phone books for gluing on. So phone book is perfect for this, but um, any kind of newsprint, I use 
newsprint. Obviously, this one I've used many times over and over again. Um, old sheets of paper. This is an old calendar. Um, use the back, the front, old anything, but something so you're not getting glue on your table, obviously. And I think that is all we need. I really look forward to being in class with y'all again. Um, even in the magical world of Zoom, it's, it's great to have community and people back together again. So uh, thanks for signing up and we'll see you soon.